Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. Just a few today. Eh? Something is going on. Okay, so as usual, we're going to check about the platform. And uh, this is the one. This is the class of tonight. We already checked the uh, exercise 4.7. Remember that we have to finish the... Uh, exercise 4.9 as well which is kind of easy and once you finish that one we need to finish the uh, final test which is going to have four parts on the first part you just need to answer this is part of something that we have done already uh, three questions on that and then four and five that you just need to take the correct option then on the part two uh, three questions only, pretty easy. And the part three, five questions, multiple options. And for the last part, also multiple options, okay? So that will be it. Uh, today, it was the day for you to finish this one. I hope you're done. If you haven't, I'm going to check tomorrow and probably send some messages. Okay. In the in the first part of the of the test, teacher, the same problem that in the previous section that uh, we need to leave a space between uh, the last uh, uh, letter and the question mark. Okay, so you tried that already, and that is the way. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I'm checking on that one, and yeah, it's the same, right? Something. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for sharing all that. Okay, so let's check the attendance. Uh, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay. Ah, Dora. Yeah. Okay, very good. And Dora as well. I can see here. Perfect. Yeah, I got you here, Dora. So, uh, tomorrow we finish classes. And as you see, uh, as you saw already on the group, uh, we are already in the process to start the last module the last one my friends well after that one we have to go to the preparation for the TOEFL right so and um and that's it whenever you pass the certification I'm very sure that you are going to pass uh then yeah we are going to but uh, we'll finish we don't have anything else but of course we're going to check about what to do whenever you finish the courses you need to continue on this one, right? You need to continue practicing, getting some uh, vocabulary, getting uh, a way for you to improve a certain details. Everybody as an individual, you have uh, challenges and things that you are good at. So you have to take advantage of the good uh, things and improve the ones that you need to improve. That would be the only thing. Actually, we're going to check about something like that today. So let's see how it goes. But the, we're going to check uh, and know a little bit more about the topic that is uh, on at this time. So it's going to be uh, about the 
artificial intelligence. So let me just check here. Okay, I'm going to show you a video. Well, I have like four videos that we're gonna check and then we're gonna we're gonna co uh, comment, uh, give opinion. So of course we're going to go one by one. So this is the one. Uh, actually, it's not that one. Let me see. This you are watching This is the first one. Yeah. Okay. So let's check on that one, and then we're gonna comment. So let's see how it goes. Vision TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. There's a lot of buzz around artificial intelligence at the moment, and the term AI seems to be thrown around a lot. But what is it exactly? To clear things up, I just wanted to do a quick video around this topic. First of all, let's look at the definition. To avoid confusion, we have to go back to the earliest and hence purest definition of AI from the time when it was first coined. The official idea and definition of AI was first coined by Jay McCartney in 1955 at the Dartmouth Conference. Of course, there was plenty of research work done on AI by others such as Alan Turing before this, but what they were working on was an undefined field before 1955. Okay, so here's what McCarthy proposed. Quote, Every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. An attempt will be made to find out how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. Translation. In essence, AI is a machine with the ability to solve problems that are usually done by us humans with our natural intelligence. A computer will demonstrate a form of intelligence when it learns how to improve itself at solving these problems. To elaborate further, the 1955 proposal defines seven areas of AI. Today there's surely more, but here are the original seven. 1. Simulating higher functions of the human brain. 2. Programming a computer to use general language. 3. Arranging hypothetical neurons in a manner enabling them to form concepts. 4. A way to determine and measure problem complexity. 5. Self-improvement. 6. Abstraction, defined as the quality of dealing with ideas rather than events. 7. Randomness and creativity. After 60 years, I think realistically we've completed the language, measure of problem complexity and self-improvement to at least some degree. However, randomness and creativity is just starting to be explored. This year, we've seen a couple of web episode scripts, short films, and even a feature length film co-written or completely written by AI. They don't really make sense, but here's a few snippets for your entertainment anyway. I need to leave, and I'm not free of the world. Yes, perhaps I should uh, take it from here. I'm not gonna do something. Mm -hmm. It's not a dream, but I've got a time to stay there. Well, I still think you could be back on the table. It's a damn thing scared to say. Nothing is going to be a thing. From not make is so longer of the face in the comprised. And a person is what the world on the country of have the construction of the mic. Could the person in front are and how they deal to part of them. Okay, so in the definition, you heard the word intelligence. What is intelligence? Well, according to Jack Copeland, who has written several books on AI, some of the most important factors of intelligence are generalization learning. That is, learning that enables the learner to be able to perform better in situations not previously encountered. Reasoning. To reason is to draw conclusions appropriate to the situation in hand. Problem solving. Given such and such data, find X. Perception. Analyzing a scanned environment and analyzing features and relationships between objects. Self-driving cars are an example. Language understanding. Understanding language by following syntax and other rules similar to a human. 
Okay, so now we have an understanding of AI and intelligence. To bring it together a bit and solidify the concept in your mind of what AI is, here's a few examples of AI. Machine learning, computer vision, natural language processing, robotics, pattern recognition, and knowledge management. There are also different types of artificial intelligence in terms of approach. For example, there's strong AI and weak AI. Strong AI is simulating the human brain by building systems that think and in the process give us an insight into how the brain works. We're nowhere near this stage yet. Weak AI is a system that behaves like a human but doesn't give us an insight into how the brain works. IBM's Deep Blue, a chess playing AI, was an example. It processed millions of moves before it made any actual moves on the chessboard. It doesn't stop there though. There's actually a new kind of middle ground between strong and weak AI. This is where a system is inspired by human reasoning, but doesn't have to stick to it. IBM's Watson is an example. Like humans, it reads a lot of information, recognizes patterns, and builds up evidence to say, hey, I'm X percent confident that this is the right solution to the question that you have asked me from the information that I've read. If you want to know more on IBM Watson, you can click on the annotation now or the link in the description below. Google's deep learning is similar as it mimics the structure of the human brain by using neural networks but doesn't follow its function exactly. The system uses nodes that act as artificial neurons connecting information. Going a little bit deeper, neural networks are actually a subset of machine learning. So what's machine learning then? Machine learning refers to algorithms that enable software to improve its performance over time as it obtains more data. This is programming by input-output examples rather than just coding. So that this makes more sense, let's use an example. A programmer would have no idea how to program a computer to recognize a dog but he can create a program with a form of intelligence that can learn to do so. If he gives the program enough image data in the form of dogs and let it process and learn, when you give the program an image of a new dog that it's never seen before, it would be able to tell that it's a dog with relative ease. Okay, so before we finish, just one last concept. Most artificial intelligence algorithms are expert systems. So what's an expert system? The often cited definition of an expert system is as follows. An expert system is a system that employs human knowledge in a computer to solve problems that ordinarily require human expertise. Basically, it's the practical application of a knowledge database. We've arguably only just got the first proven non-expert system this year. DeepMind's AlphaGo. AlphaGo is not an expert system, meaning that its algorithms could be used and applied to other things. Demis Hassabis, who was the co-creator of DeepMind, highlighted this in a Google blog. Quote, We are thrilled to have mastered Go and thus achieved one of the grand challenges of AI. However, the most significant aspect of all of this, for us, is that AlphaGo isn't just an expert system built on handcrafted rules. Instead, it uses general machine learning techniques to figure out for itself how to win Go. He goes on, Quote, because the methods we've used are general purpose, our hope is that one day they could be extended to help us address some of society's toughest and most pressing problems, from climate modeling to complex disease analysis." End quote. In other words, the algorithms that AlphaGo used to win Go could serve as a basis to be applied to very complex problems. If you want to know more about AlphaGo, hit the annotation now, or you can follow the link in the description. All right, so to bring this all together and summarize all that we've learnt, Let's recap. So what is AI? Commonly AI or artificial intelligence is a machine or a computer program that learns how to do tasks that require forms of intelligence and are usually done by humans. And the other thing to take away, intelligence comes in many forms and has many different aspects. At this time, we just have many different types of AIs that are good at particular subsets of intelligence. So anyway, I hope that clears things up, as a lot of people were confused about what AI actually is. So anyway, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Good. What did you get from the video? It is a... Uh... Amazing was the, the the way that the 
developed from the very beginning that uh, they were trying to emulate the human brain. And now that uh, the machine can learn by itself is, is uh, something important. And uh, last we comment last last day that uh, many of employment are in risk because uh, uh, waitress, uh, teachers, uh, experts, experts in some fields that are uh, uh, giving uh, knowledge to companies, something like that, uh, the company didn't uh, use them because they have an, an, a knowledge base based at where are all of the information that they need in in uh, a little seconds they have all of the information that they need to know and make a better decision that we are expert consultor and uh, is uh, we need to see in in another in another way so another profession another uh, careers another fields of study that the human can be developed because the, the part of the knowledge is it will be used by artificial intelligence but it, we we need to know about that we don't we, we don't get out of that information because we are lost <laughs> we we don't know what is happening yeah so yeah you, you're right so uh, it's very interesting um about the concept of machine learning machine learning is something that we have had for a long time i mean um it's something that for example google launched the first like 10 years ago and companies they can create their own model uh, or train a model by entering some data and then uh, that is the, the interesting part that the machine learn. They recognize patterns, right? Because that's what they do. Uh, for example, the one that, that you saw in the video about doubt, right? They are able to identify that this is a doubt because of the structure, where are the eyes, where is the mouth, uh, the nose, things like that one. So it recognizes and automatically tells you, oh, this is a doubt, right? Or he is the dog. Sometimes, I mean, with mature learning, you are able uh, to upload a picture with a lot of things and a dog within the things and identify where is the dog and what kind of object the picture have. Another thing is the speech to text or the text to speech, right? Uh, I believe that one of the things that people wanted to have a long time ago it was the one that we have already that you can translate, right? You can put the camera into something and it translates to the language that you want. And also audios. I mean, you can speak uh, to the cell phone and then the cell phone says the words in the other language. So, I mean, we have moved a lot, a lot. Some things that we thought were not possible are possible now. Yes, yes, it's amazing. And... <laughs> And we need to be aware of the, all of that. Yeah, definitely. So we need to get into that one. We need to jump into that one and check. Um, I mean, how can we take advantage of that one? Because, yeah, you, we don't want to be deprecated. We want to be part of it, right? So. <laughs> yes. Good, perfect. Thank you. Any other comment on the first video? No more. All right. Second video then is also about the same topic. Okay. How does it work? So let's check into that one. Artificial intelligence has become one of the most important tools in the modern world. It knows what tweets you want to read, it can understand your handwriting, and it can drive your car. AI are important because while humans are pretty smart and good at performing a number of tasks, computers are better. Much better. Or at least they can be if they're programmed by an above average intelligence human. The key to a useful and powerful AI is the ability to learn and make its own decisions. And the burning question in my mind is, how do AI work? Computers, fundamentally, need to be told what to do, and a computer just doing what it's told to do is not exactly intelligent. So how can we get it to make its own informed decisions? 
This is the issue of machine learning. At the heart of this issue is a computer's ability to do two things. The first has already been mentioned, make its own decisions. Secondly, it needs to be able to make predictions, and a good AI will do so with minimal error. But how do we actually achieve machine learning? Well, AI are implemented in so many different ways, it's hard to answer this question very generally. But like most computer science problems, the solution starts with an algorithm. There are a lot of different machine learning algorithms and protocols that are applied in different circumstances. But to get the best idea of how this all works, I'm just going to focus on a popular and widely used method. A lot of AI systems are built up from what's called biologically inspired computing. After all, living organisms are some of the best thinking, decision making machines around. If you want to build something that thinks, the first and most obvious point of call is to simulate some kind of brain, some kind of information processing machine that can make different decisions given different information. This is the basis of a neural network. Neural networks are a kind of rough simulation of a collection of neurons. In a neural network, the system takes in some starting information, which stimulates a bunch of neurons. Depending on which neurons are stimulated, other neurons get stimulated, and the whole process repeats until a final result is completed. So how do we actually implement something like this in practice? Well, simple neural networks are built up from systems called perceptrons. These are a kind of artificial neuron. Each perceptron takes in several binary inputs, x1, x2, x3, and so on. It uses these to produce an output, y, just by taking their sum. The output itself also has to be binary, so how do we deal with this? Well, we say that if the sum of the inputs is greater than or equal to some threshold, then y is equal to 1. If the sum of the inputs is less than the threshold, then y equals 0. The idea of a threshold is a good starting point, but in practice, we instead tend to say that the output is equal to 1 if the sum plus some negative number b, called the bias, is greater than or equal to 0. The bias is a representation of how easy it is for the perceptron to output a 1. But it's no different from the threshold idea, it just keeps everything centred around 0. This is a good start, but it's quite a basic model and doesn't allow for much complexity in terms of making different decisions. The problem is that each input, xi, has the same weighting. We can build up a better system if we assign a unique weighting w to each input. We can then multiply each input by its weighting when we take their sum. This allows for different inputs to contribute different amounts, and gives the perceptron a sense of importance for each input. Say we're building a perceptron that will compute for us whether or not we should go outside today. The decision might be decided by the following factors. Does the weather look nice right now? Does the forecast say it'll be nice all day? And do I have a jacket? These three factors might be of different importance to you. It might matter a lot that the weather is nice right now, so you give it a weighting of 2. It might matter a bit if the forecast says that it's going to be nice all day, so you give it a weighting of 1.5. And it may not really matter all that much to you if you have a jacket, so you just give it a weighting of 1. Now what you have to do is set your bias. Let's say you set it at minus 2.5. Remember the bias has to be negative. And now you go and gather all of the relevant information. Say the weather does look good outside, but the forecast doesn't say it'll be nice all day, and you do have a jacket. The inputs are now known, so we can compute the sum, which comes out at 0.5. The output y is only equal to 1, as the sum plus the bias is greater than or equal to 0. So now that we can tweak each perceptron to act very differently, we can pile on layer after layer of artificial neuron. More layers means more decisions, more decisions means more outputs. This network of perceptrons is what we call a neural network starts at the output layer, where the initial data is processed, and then a series of hidden layers compute further information, until the final decisions are made at the output layer. So is that it? Does the whole discussion of neural networks end with perceptrons? Well, of course not. Perceptrons have a few big problems. Firstly, the output from a perceptron can immediately jump between 0 and 1. Making a small change to the weights or bias can lead to an entirely different result. Secondly, the weights must be predetermined. We might not always choose the most suitable values. So we would like a way for the system to be able to adjust the weights itself in order to minimise error when making predictions. To deal with the first problem, we need to change the actual structure of the artificial neuron itself. Instead of using a perceptron network, we instead use what's called a sigmoid neuron. Sigmoid neurons give an output determined by the sigmoid function. The argument of the sigmoid function, z, is just the sum minus the bias. If z is very large, the sigmoid function is practically 1. But if it's very small, then the sigmoid function gives out practically 0. Now we have a function where making a small change to z will only make a small, gradual change in the output. As well as fixing our original problem, the sigmoid neuron has a continuous spectrum of outputs, unlike the step function before. So now we can build up a network of artificial neurons that can make a bunch of different decisions based on what starting information it gets. But how can it actually teach itself to adjust certain parameters, like the weights? Well, it just so happens, there's an algorithm for that. The backpropagation algorithm is a method used to train neural networks. To utilise backpropagation, the neural network has to be given some training examples. This is just a set of inputs for which we know the desired output. A bit like data you would use to fit a curve in statistics, it uses the given outputs to compute its own outputs, predictions. We then need a way to compare these predictions to the desired outputs. 
the kind of measurement of how good our neural network is. For this, we define the cost function. The cost function takes the sum of the difference squared between the desired output and the prediction. If all the predictions are close to the desired outputs, then the cost function is roughly zero. But if the predictions are off by a lot, then the cost function will give back a very large value. The obvious goal here is to get the network to minimise the total cost. This is done by adjusting the weights so that they're optimal for minimising the cost function. But to adjust the weights, we need to calculate something called the gradient of the cost function. And this is where backpropagation comes in. I'm not going to go into the detail on the maths behind backpropagation. That requires its own video and one that I'll inevitably be making in the future. But backpropagation works by using two phases, propagation and weight update. To start the propagation phase, we give an initial guess as to what the weight should be and then enter the training inputs into the system. The inputs are propagated through the network as usual until the network produces outputs. After the network makes its predictions, an error is calculated for each desired output. The reason for doing this is that the errors for a neuron in any particular layer, say L, can be expressed in terms of the errors of the neurons in the next layer up, L plus 1. So starting from the output layer, the errors are propagated backwards until an error has been calculated for each neuron in the network. Once all of the errors have been calculated, they can be used to calculate the gradient of the cost function. As I mentioned previously, this is used to slightly optimise the weights, usually in an algorithm called gradient descent. The weights are only updated a small amount each time, the rate at which is called the learning rate, unsurprisingly. Having a small learning rate means that the training examples could have to be run many hundreds of times before the weights are optimal, which might not be very practical. And a learning rate that's too large may cause you to overshoot the optimal values. But in practice, we now have a way to train a neural network, however complex, to give the best possible outcomes it can. The only downside is that it needs to see some examples first. Training examples are a very common technique in machine learning. Take for example, Microsoft's Tay Tweets, a Twitter AI that learns what to say by reading other people's tweets from across the internet. The idea was well-intentioned and started out innocently, but like a lot of things on the internet, it went quite wrong. Tay was eventually deactivated after people started having some not so family friendly conversations with her on Twitter and Tay picked up some bad habits. But neural networks are an incredibly useful starting point for thinking about AI and the wider field of biologically inspired computing in general. This leads away for concepts like genetic algorithms, which a computer can use to teach itself how to solve a variety of problems. At this point, I couldn't say that I completely explained how AI works. That would be pretty much impossible, let alone in one video. But hopefully I provided some decent insight into how to get a string of ones and zeros to think just like you. Maybe even better. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in computer science, check out some of my other related videos. Okay, very clear, right? <laughs> wow. Yes, I think they are using artificial intelligence to do more algorithms to, to analyze all of the uh, perceptrons that uh, how to, to conform them and how to get information and analyze that that is that the, the important part analyze via uh, mathematical thinking and uh, doing all of the bias uh, uh, possibilities and minimizing the error is is uh, yeah, amazing uh, how a mathematical function can can uh, uh, do this kind of analysis and i think that uh, like the, the, the advance in neurology is uh, in neuroscience is uh, giving a uh, other perspective to program the perceptrons to to get and analyze the information and and the perceptrons uh, give the neurologists the more information how to analyze the brain the human brain as they, they are uh, uh, they are learning from each other i think yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, as you say. I mean, um, yeah, now that everything is more advanced, uh, they're taking models that were built in the in the past so they can construct uh, more complex things. And the good thing is that they are able not to recognize because of a pattern. I mean, it's a training, what they do. They train something, and whenever they're ready, uh, well, you are ready to... To predict, and that is one of the most important things. I mean, when you, uh, the machine predicts something, uh, yes, probably is not hundred percent accurate, but it's going to be very, very accurate. Uh, what happens with humans is that sometimes feelings are in between, right? And we know what is going to happen, but we don't do what we have to do. 
So the machine does not have that one. So they say, you have to do this because this is what you need to do it. And that's it. Um, also, uh, this was very interesting because I guess we never have seen uh, math in English, right? And uh, you can see that it's complex. I mean, sometimes even in Spanish, sometimes it's a little bit um, complex, but in English, I mean, the concepts, the words, the pronunciation is totally different. And that makes uh, this um, a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. Besides the video is uh, from England and uh, yeah, the accent is is quite, quite difficult sometimes. But uh, I mean, you, uh, I, I think that you were able to check some things on how uh, this work, I mean, this was very really basic, actually. It, this was just an example, but models and algorithms are very large there, right? Yes, yes, it's a, a simple idea. I, I, will, will I use a jacket? Uh, this, uh, I think there are more more connections involved, but it's, it's amazing all of the connections that they need to make a decision. And it is... Uh, uh, not easy to understand for everyone. <laughs> that is true. It's true. So it's not not easy um, for everybody. But I mean, it gives you an insight. Uh, this is just for you to have an idea on that one, right? So good math in English. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And any other comment or opinion? Nobody else's. Uh, well, so if you see this, I mean, sometimes people, sometimes I mean, it's a it's a very common joke um, that they say uh, I'm learning this in math, but I'm not going to use that for my life, right? So it's a very common thing. That is not true. I mean, maybe you do not calculate things every day, but whenever you send a message, whenever you start a car. Whenever you turn on your computer, math is there everywhere, right? With yes. the electricity, uh, with the uh, water that you have there in your house, everything, everything has math. I mean, the glasses that I'm wearing, uh, the cap that I'm wearing, the headsets, everything, uh, math is everywhere. So we cannot take that for granted. Of course, we we cannot try to understand every single thing, but there are things, basic things that we need to know, right? Because, I mean, it's important. Math is one of the most important uh, sciences. Uh, people don't like, but I, I do believe it's important to, to try to understand the basics and know and, and I mean, in my, in my with this artificial intelligence, maybe in the future, you uh, they are. I mean, there will be any precedents anymore, and they will tell you how many, how much taxes you're going to pay, uh, how many keys you have to have. They maybe are going to solve the things and tell you what to do. So, algorithms, right? Yes, even even music is a math at the end. <laughs> That is true. There are patterns, right? So you yes. go with a beat on the on the drums, and then the bass line has another beat that complements the guitar. Uh, you know, humanity is like that. Some people, I, I'm I'm a musician and I play, and uh, all all the people they look at the guitar and yes, the guitar is very nice because it makes the solo and everything, but without the bass and the drums and other instruments, it's not possible to have music. So it's a compliment and it's math there. I mean, you accelerate things, you make a compass two by four, four by eight, whatsoever. Math is everywhere. Yes. So yes, it's a very interesting thing. So that's why I found this kind of interesting. So you can listen a little bit of vocabulary that I know that is difficult, but even in Spanish, right? But it's something that we might need to know. On the TOEFL, of course, we're not gonna find math math test. Good. Any comments? Any other opinion before we move on?
Okay, let's check a different one. How will AI change the world? Let's see how it goes. In the coming years, artificial intelligence is probably going to change your life and likely the entire world. But people have a hard time agreeing on exactly how. The following are excerpts from a World Economic Forum interview where renowned computer science professor and AI expert Stuart Russell helps separate the sense from the nonsense. There's a big difference between asking a human to do something and giving that as the objective to an AI system. When you ask a human to fetch you a cup of coffee, you don't mean this should be their life's mission and nothing else in the universe matters. Even if they have to kill everybody else in Starbucks to get you the coffee before it closes, they should do that. No, that's not what you mean. Right? You mean all the other things that we mutually care about, they should factor into your behavior as well. And the problem with the way we build AI systems now is we give them a fixed objective, right? The algorithms require us to specify everything in the objective. And if you say, you know, can we fix the acidification of the oceans? Yeah, you could have a catalytic reaction that does that extremely efficiently, but, you know, consumes a quarter of the oxygen in the atmosphere, which would apparently cause us to die fairly slowly and unpleasantly over the course of several hours. Um, so how do we avoid this problem, right? You might say, okay, well, just be more careful about specifying the objective, right? Don't forget the yeah, atmospheric oxygen. And then, of course, some uh, side effect of the reaction in the ocean poisons all the fish. Okay, well, I meant don't kill the fish either. And then, well, what about the seaweed? Okay, well, don't, don't do anything that's going to cause all the seaweed to die. And on and on and on, right? And the reason that we don't have to do that with humans is that humans often know that they don't know all the things that we care about. If you ask a human to get you a cup of coffee, you know, and you happen to be in the Hotel Georges Sank in Paris, where the coffee is, I think, 13 euros a cup. It's entirely reasonable to come back and say, well, it's 13 euros, are you sure you want, or I could go next door and, you know, get one. And it's a perfectly normal thing for a person to do, right? You ask, you know, I'm, I'm going to repaint your house. Is it okay if I take off the drain pipes and then put them back? We don't think of this as a terribly sophisticated capability, but AI systems don't have it because the way we build them now, they have to know the full objective. If we build systems that know that they don't know what the objective is, then they start to exhibit these behaviors, like asking permission before getting rid of all the oxygen in the atmosphere. In all these senses, control over the AI system comes from the machine's uncertainty about what the true objective is. And it's it's when you build machines that believe with certainty that they have the objective, that's when you get a sort of psychopathic behavior. And I think we see the same thing in humans. What happens when general purpose AI hits the real economy? How do things change? Can we adapt? You know, this is a very old point. Amazingly, Aristotle actually has a passage where he says, look, if we had fully automated weaving machines and plectrums that could pluck the lyre and produce music without any humans, then we wouldn't need any workers. That idea, which I think it was Keynes who called it technological unemployment in 1930, is very obvious to people, right? They think, yeah, of course, if the machine does the work, then I'm going to be unemployed. If you think about the warehouses that companies are currently operating for e-commerce, they are half automated. The way it works is that an old warehouse where you've got tons of stuff piled up all over the place and the humans go and rummage around and then bring it back and send it off, there's a robot who goes and gets the shelving unit that contains the thing that you need, but the human has to pick the object out of the bin or the off the shelf because that's still too difficult. But, you know, at the same time, could you make a robot that is accurate enough to be able to pick pretty much any object? And there's a very wide variety of objects that you can buy. And that would, at a stroke, eliminate three or four million jobs. There's an interesting story that E.M. Forster wrote where everyone is entirely machine dependent. The story is really about the fact that if you hand over the management of your civilization to machines, you then lose the incentive to understand it yourself or, or to teach the next generation how to understand it. And you can see Wall-E actually as a modern version where everyone is enfeebled and infantilized by the machine. And that hasn't been possible up to now, right? We put a lot of our civilization into books, but the books can't run it for us. And so we always have to teach the next generation. If you work it out, it's about a trillion person years of teaching and learning and an unbroken chain that goes back tens of thousands of generations. What happens if that chain breaks? And I think that's something we have to understand as AI moves forward. 
the actual date of arrival of general purpose AI, you're not going to be able to pinpoint it, right? It isn't a single day. It's also not the case that it's all or nothing. The impact is going to be increasing. So with every advance in AI, it significantly expands the range of tasks. So in that sense, I think most experts say by the end of the century, we're very, very likely to have general purpose AI. The median is something around 2045. I'm a little more on the conservative side. I think the problem is harder than we think. I like what John McCarthy, who was sort of one of the founders of AI, when he was asked this question, he said, well, somewhere between five and 500 years, and we're gonna need, I think, several Einsteins to make it happen. But how will the economy change in the meantime? Will it be able to keep growing? Watch this video to hear economist Kate Rayworth explain why. Okay. So what did you get from this video? Uh, sorry, I, I lost uh, some part of the video because I need to go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, my partners have uh, some comment. Yeah, I know it was kind of difficult because he was speaking kind of fast, but we are in advance, of course. And uh, um, again, the uh, intonation and pronunciation from English people are kind of different. But I would like to know, what did you get from the video? Nothing at all. We're in trouble. Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I think it was comparing, comparing the, the, the way of the human was is the thinking and the, 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 the artificial intelligence was uh, about the, the, the situations of the economy of another things in the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, there is going to be a negative impact and a positive impact of this technology in the world. Definitely it's going to happen, something like that. So, um, I, that I think the, the, the universities and uh, the schools and uh, we need to to take note and uh, we need to start to prepare but uh, uh, in previous videos say something that uh, uh, the humans are smart and the computers are uh, fast that that was the the the, the comparison and as fast and uh, can uh, accumulate information and can analyze so fast too. And uh, we need to find ways that uh, where uh, artificial intelligence can go and we need to to start training the, the, the students in thinking, thinking, critical thinking, because uh, the this uh, three years of pandemic uh, get the, the brain of the majority of the students uh, like uh, sleepy. <laughs> they they uh, spend many time and, and in, in that moment was something good because uh, they don't need to think in the, the world outside. They don't need to sing in pandemic. They don't need to sing in uh, to avoid the stress. It, it was good that they were uh, video games. They start uh, uh, giving the mind to another things, you know, the situation. But uh, uh, they get uh, the the brain like uh, in a in a stand in a standby, <laughs> and then they are not thinking. They, they I, I was working with this student and. And I, I can see clearly how the language has diminished. They, they, they don't understand basic definitions. They don't understand uh, basic information. And uh, if we follow this pattern, 
and they start using uh, artificial intelligence. The, the, the logical conclusion is that uh, they are in, in, in a difficult situation because uh, they don't need to use the brain. They ask all of the, the, the artificial intelligence and, and uh, what the human be, be, be doing. Uh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> a difficult time. Is Yeah, you are very right. I mean, uh, yeah, we are excited about what is going to happen, but we are also uh, expecting something wrong. I mean, many things can happen. We see the movies, the movies... Uh, that tells you that the robots are going to kill the humanity and it's just a movie but I mean, we don't know anymore right so uh, yeah that is something that I mean if the machines imagine that they they are very logical and they say no I mean uh, it's, it's, it's not good the humanity I mean that, that's what happened <laughs> in, the, in the movies right yes. the movies uh, it happens that the machines get to analyze this is not good, right? I mean, human people, they're not, don't deserve to live. Yes, so, yes. Uh -huh. From, from uh, Robocop, the very old movie, Robocop have, uh, I don't remember, three or five directives that the things that uh, they can do in the uh, one of them is not to attack uh, one of the people that in the company was created, a uh, robot. And uh, these uh, instructions uh, paralyze uh, their actions. But uh, uh, this kind of values, if uh, the machine have another values, like in uh, your robot, uh, Isaac Asimov, in the uh, Will Smith in the, that that movie uh, I don't know what is in, in in English the name but in Spanish is your robot uh, uh, the the machine seems that the human beings are uh, putting in danger the earth <laughs> it, it could be I mean yeah I mean now I believe that. As we did in the past, we need to analyze things at like our right. So uh, it's something that, I mean, let's hope it doesn't happen. But what are the chances right now? We are closer to those kind of things. So um, now we're going to, I mean, discuss about that one. So how do you think it's going to be? It's going to be, uh, it's going to have more positive things for humanity or less positive Things. What do you think, everybody? Well, in Would my you... opinion, go uh -huh. ahead. No, uh, it just uh, that if you could repeat the, the question, please. Yeah, do you believe that in general, in general, um, we are going to have more positive impact from artificial intelligence um, or negative? Or what are going to be the positive and the negative impact? Maybe it's going to be like that. So, I I think like in in technology in general, there are more positive impacts. Uh, always there are somebody that break the rules that go for other wave. And uh, these hackers and uh, all of the, that kind of people that uh, do the bad things, but in general, is uh, in general are more positive situations, and and the the good people for saying in some way are trying to avoid the, the other people do bad things. And I think was, was, is what the, the same situation is. Uh, there are more people that want to do the things right. And uh, there are more people trying to do the things right to avoid the, the things going out of the border of, of Eric and justice and all of the things. 
And I, I, I think that this was a most positive situations for for use of this new technology that is overwhelming that but uh, in some moment uh, there will be an, an a point of equilibrium point that the and the, the people learn to how to deal with that and how to be prepared and how to 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 get life to 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 do this kind of job that is a going to a collaboration with this situation and use them in a better way. Okay, so you think that actually humanity is going to balance that one? And yes, in, in some moment. Okay, very good, perfect. Uh, I'm sorry, somebody else was going to say something. I have a comment. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think like the it is the most the most uh around the most benefit that AI have to our life is possible, but you know the, the nature of the human being <laughs> always there is a some someone that used for for bad purpose. But I, I think that uh, we all, we are live in in a in a era that we are maybe I don't know how to say lucky or privileged 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 uh -huh. privileged yeah because you now we 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 have oh no hemos visto we have we seen. have seen, we have seen yeah we have seen a lot of uh, technological advance and a lot of um, a lot of historical success and a, the, the evolution of intelligent or artificial intelligence is one of them. Maybe in maybe we we don't we cannot see all the all the evolution that of the AE but because it, I think that in, in intelligent no, artificial intelligence uh, have a lot of year of development, but uh, no one is, is when is is popular or is no knowing for for all the people. But in the future, maybe the movie come comes true because in the future, I think that uh, it has a a lot of advance or a lot of evolution. Maybe the machines. <laughs> The machines kill the war. I don't know. Maybe the matrix comes to real. But who knows? So, but it, it's interesting, and we can say we are part of the history. That's it. Very good, perfect, very nice. I mean, you are right. Uh, I believe that uh, many things can happen. Maybe one of the things that we need to analyze is not only the advance of artificial intelligence, but also how humanity is going on right because right now as david said some people they are not the new generation sometimes they are not able to speak clearly in mind to analyze to do the right things you have seen that all the values has been lost i mean what is going to happen in in 50 years how is going to be the values what is going to be the technology i mean it, it's kind of scary if you compare both, right? Because, I mean, if humanity is going to to have less values and they don't care about many other things, uh, I mean, many things can happen, right? Another thing that we need to analyze also, and I mean, it's something that is already happening, is the manipulation, right? The manipulation that the people in control of the technology can, can have. Because this is something that might be real in the future. If you think about uh, all these people that are creating and that they are providing you an answer, right? We we try already the chat GPT, where you enter a, a a question and they give you an answer. How do you know if that is the correct answer? How is going to be in the future when people are not able to analyze and think, oh, this is not correct? 
they will receive an answer and they will say, that is correct. Actually, that is happening. So many videos, so many information, so much information on the internet is not correct. And people believe what is there only by researching, by mining in the future um, that a robot, a computer is going to give you an answer and you're going to say, okay, this is the answer. This is the thing that I have to do. That is dangerous, right? People don't care, teacher, about if the information is true. And maybe that someone bad, like we we were talking, we were talking about, uh, maybe can can take advantage of that because can put information in this technology and all the people, uh, all the people believe it. So that is a big problem that is already happening, right? People watch videos and they see something and they say, oh, that is it, that is it. Uh, but it's not sometimes, I mean, and uh, a computer can fail. I mean, somebody can put the information into the computer. I don't know. So the future is here and that's why this is a huge impact because the one who gets to control that one, if there are no good regulations, they will be able to, to do whatever they want to manipulate. I mean, do you remember uh, that when Donald Trump, he got to be the president, there was this like rumor that they were manipulating by Facebook, putting some messages and telling you this is true and this is not true. And, and actually it was proof that people voted, uh, some percentage of people voted to one people and not for the other because of that one. I mean, that's why Facebook is for free. Nothing is for free, right? If you download an application and it says that it's for free, that is not true. They are taking your information and analyzing what is going on. So, I mean, when you click many things there in Facebook, and they put something there for you to buy, for you to do things. And in the future with artificial intelligence it might be easier. I mean, maybe you don't have to... They don't have to tell you, uh, like with lies, come here. They, they will give you an answer. And that's it, right? So that is the like the ethical problem here uh, that a lot of people are speaking about. That one. Not only the unemployment, because yeah, that is something that is going to affect and create a crisis, but maybe that is going to be regulated. But what happens with that one, with the manipulation? What do you think about that? There will be a there will be a, a multiplication of thinking, like the the dust companies that are uh, in all of the world. They need all the people think the same to buy uh, to do a model that uh, fix every everyone uh, in everywhere, and uh, for that reason is uh, they are manipulating that. Uh, Trump's election is uh, obviously manipulated. It was uh, like a mathematical exact uh, because uh, the, the, the woman Hillary Clinton get uh, 3 million more, 3 million more uh, the, the, the votes. And, and even though she lost, uh, how it is possible? Because it's a, a great a quantity of 3 million. And exactly in the in the states that the, the electoral votes are important, it's something with a, a mathematical precision. It obviously was a manipulation, and and uh, this is a little thing, uh, no, not a little thing, but <laughs> it is something that is not directly affecting us, but. Uh, in the future, the, the machines will guide in your light like now. If, uh, if you speak about burger in front of your Facebook or your Instagram, they, they, they start giving you uh, advertising, uh, offers, uh, promotion, sales, and, and uh, they are manipulating you. And the young people didn't realize that they are in a, in a, in a, in a Trump or they are in a, in the future, it will be the same. For that reason, I, I say before that we need to teach critical thinking.
to the boys, to the students, to get out the trap because uh, in another way, <laughs> we are in the hands of the people that are uh, programming the computers. So that is it, right? Those companies are going to have the power. I mean, the power. That's why, I mean, think about it. Facebook, I mean, there are advertisements, but there are not a lot. And it's a multi-million company. And it's for free. Mm, something's not good there, right? So influencers also. I mean, the world is changing in a radical way. And this is going to impact, yeah, positive because we're going to have a lot of tools. But like in the movies, right? The big guy with the expensive suit in the top of the tower that has the whole power, is, is he going to do the right thing? Or is he going to do the wrong thing? I, well, I, I hear a, a thought that Say that the, when, when the when the product is free, the product are you. That's it. <laughs> they want our money, right? And they are going to do whatever they want, they, whatever they can, so they can get that one. So, it's I mean it's it's huge everything that is happening. Uh, hopefully, as Marvin said, maybe we are not going to get to see that. <laughs> so. Maybe we're going to see certain things and then analyze uh, what is going to happen in the future, but we're not going to, to see something that radical. I hope, right? I don't know. Anything can happen. I mean, the world is moving very, very fast nowadays. Very yes, good. it's so fast. It's so fast, but uh, uh, even though we don't see that, but we need to 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 prepare we need to, to do our our best to try to to prepare to instruct to give uh, guys directions and uh, to teach the people how to think we need to do uh, whatever we can and wherever we can with our kids with our nephews with our uh, relatives the uh, people we, we can we get access to them and we can uh, give us not some advices in a in a good way that they can receive it and they can learn. It. We we can put something in the in the mind of the people that uh, let them uh, think about the the situation. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's the best that we can do and expect that people care a little bit less about money. I mean, money is important, right? But uh, what is the difference to have 100 millions or to have 80 million dollars? I mean, 20 million, but if you have 80 million dollars, that is good enough. And maybe you are going to help people and community and many other things. So let's hope for the best, right? So this is a topic that we can discuss a lot about right now. Good things, bad things are going to happen. That is for sure, as everything in the humanity. I mean, internet. It's a good thing and it's also a bad thing, depending on the tool or how you use it. So exactly the same is going to happen. And it's something that we discussed before, as you remember. It's not the tool, the one that is not good. It's the people that are using that. Yes. So let's see how it goes, my friends. <laughs> the end of an era is coming, I guess. Many things are, are coming, many changes. Good. We're going to do a little exercise tonight. Something that we haven't done before. Something new. So please bring some paper and bring a pencil. Paper and pencil. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So what is going to happen is this. I'm going to tell you something and you need to write that something that I'm going to tell you. But this is not going to be a dictation because we are in advance already and you know many other things. So 
I'm going to tell a story that actually is something that happened. It's interesting. It's a little bit related with what we're checking right now. It's a story about um, uh, like a project, a scientific uh, test that a person did a while ago. And you are going to write with your own words. The problem is that I'm going to tell the story in Spanish. You are going to write that in English. Okay. Do you have questions on the activity? <laughs> Are you guys ready? Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, yes. Let's make it then. So I'm going to go very slow. Okay. So you think about the words and write the words. Since this is going to be live, of course, it's going to be difficult for you to find uh, words on the dictionary. You can do it if you want, mm -hmm. but I'm going to continue. I mean, that is going to be important. Um, then we're going to compare. Everybody's going to read what you wrote and compare the way that you wrote. You will find that there are many ways to say something, right? Of course, I'm going to say the exact words but sometimes you don't have to write the exact words in English. Sometimes because the words are totally different, or sometimes because that word does not exist in, in English, or, I mean, many things can happen. So just try to, to make it logical, make it sense, all right? And whenever you finish, it has to, it has to make sense the whole reading. So as we did in Spanish, I'm going to, say the words little by little and at the end I'm going to read the whole thing in Spanish and you can compare you can you can correct anything that you may want okay so here we go let me just check where we're going to start because it's a little bit long uh, let's see Oh, he is sick. Okay, got it. Okay, here we go, my friends. Okay, John Calhoun. Hizo el experimento Universo 25. Uh, I didn't say that one, but you can, I mean... I'm not going to say punctuation. Uh, you can decide the punctuation, okay? Can you start again, teacher? Sorry, but uh, yes. Uh... Okay, very well. Yeah, just to clarify that one, I mean, I'm not going to say comma or period or anything like that, but yes. you decide. You decide where you're going to put that one, okay? Okay. John Calhoun hizo el experimento Universo 25. Al principio, al principio, colocó cuatro parejas de ratones. Al principio, colocó cuatro parejas de ratones. Que en poco tiempo... que en poco tiempo comenzaron a reproducirse. Comenzaron a reproducirse. Lo que provocó lo que provocó que su población creciera rápidamente. Que su población creciera rápidamente. Sin embargo, sin embargo, Después de 315 días,
después de 315 días. Su reproducción comenzó. Su reproducción comenzó. A disminuir significativamente, ¿sabes? Su reproducción comenzó a disminuir significativamente. Cuando el número de roedores. Cuando el número de roedores llegó a 600. Cuando el número de roedores llegó a 600. Se formó una jerarquía entre ellos. Se formó una jerarquía entre ellos. Se formó una jerarquía entre ellos. Y luego aparecieron. Y luego aparecieron. Los llamados miserables. Los llamados miserables. Los roedores más grandes. Los roedores más grandes. Comenzaron a atacar al grupo. Comenzaron a atacar al grupo. Con el resultado, con el resultado de que muchos machos, de que muchos machos comenzaran a colapsar. Comenzaran a colapsar psicológicamente. Comenzaran a colapsar psicológicamente. Como resultado, como resultado, Las hembras se protegieron. Las hembras se protegieron. Y a su vez. Y a su vez. Se volvieron agresivas con sus crías. Se volvieron agresivas con sus crías. Con el paso del tiempo. Con el paso del tiempo. Las hembras mostraron comportamientos. Las 
las hembras mostraron comportamientos las hembras mostraron comportamientos cada vez más agresivos cada vez más agresivos elementos de aislamiento elementos de aislamiento elementos de aislamiento y falta de ánimo reproductivo y falta de ánimo reproductivo. Hubo una baja tasa de natalidad. Hubo una baja tasa de natalidad. Hubo una baja tasa de natalidad. Y al mismo tiempo, y al mismo tiempo, un aumento de la mortalidad, un aumento de la mortalidad en roedores más jóvenes un aumento de la mortalidad en roedores más jóvenes. Entonces apareció entonces apareció una nueva clase de roedores machos. Entonces apareció una nueva clase de roedores machos. Entonces apareció una nueva clase de roedores machos. Los llamados ratones hermosos. Los llamados ratones hermosos. Los llamados ratones hermosos. Se negaron a aparearse con las hembras. Se negaron a aparearse con las hembras. se negaron a aparearse con las hembras o luchar por su espacio o luchar por su espacio o luchar por su espacio todo lo que les importaba Todo lo que les importaba era comer y dormir. Era comer y dormir. Ok. Um... I guess it's enough by now. Uh, of course, I'm going to tell you the whole story, but um, but first of all, we're going to check about the exercise, okay? I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, voy a leer todo para que vayan chequeando, okay? John Calhoun hizo el experimento Universo 25. Al principio, colocó cuatro parejas de ratones 
que en poco tiempo comenzaron a reproducirse, lo que provocó que su población creciera rápidamente. Sin embargo, después de 315 días, su reproducción comenzó a disminuir significativamente. Cuando el número de roedores llegó a 600, se formó una jerarquía entre ellos. Y luego aparecieron los llamados miserables. Los roedores más grandes comenzaron a atacar al grupo, con el resultado de que muchos machos comenzaron a colapsar psicológicamente. Como resultado, las hembras se protegieron y a su vez se volvieron agresivas con sus crías. Con el paso del tiempo, las hembras mostraron comportamiento cada vez más agresivos. Elementos de aislamiento y falta de ánimo reproductivo. Hubo una baja tasa de natalidad y al mismo tiempo un aumento de la mortalidad en roedores más jóvenes. Entonces apareció una nueva clase de roedores machos los llamados ratones hermosos. Se negaron a aparearse con las hembras o luchar por su espacio. Todo lo que les importaba era comer y dormir. Ha, let's see how it goes. Uh, do you need a little bit of time to check some things? Yes, please. Of course. I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check. Uh, I think I have it, teacher. Okay, but I'm going to give just in case some people need, okay? Like okay. five minutes on, okay? Okay, yes. very well. Yes, please, because I used mouse instead of roedor. I don't know how to say roedor. <laughs> rodents, rodents. Rodents, okay. It comes in the... <laughs> These things you put for day, for day to die at home, that name comes? Mortality. Uh, no, the rodent. rodent ah, rodents. Uh -huh. Rodent mice. Uh -huh. I think. Comes That's in the right. name of all the poisons you put around your home <laughs> to kill them. That is what I remind me. <laughs> what a sad story. All the beautiful ones. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is us, the humanity. It is it's an analogy, obviously. Yeah, because yeah. youngest nowadays, they don't want to <laughs> neither get married or yes. neither you ask them to. When are you going to uh, maybe bring a child <laughs> to this world? <laughs> They get upset. No, they prefer to have dogs. Sometimes, because <laughs> sometimes they prefer to get a computer. Ah, okay. Because remember, yes. a dog or a cat is a responsibility. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's see what you have. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the words are not exactly the words. So, for example, you can use rats instead of rodents. So, not a problem, right? The important is the uh, is that when you read that one, it's understandable. That is very important, right? That a other person, <laughs> if you read that in English, they understand what you're saying. But uh, as I was telling you at the beginning, sometimes when you do this kind of exercises. You don't have to do or to say ex the exact word in English, right? Because of many reasons. But if you tell the story properly, they have to. They have to understand that. Question here is who wants to be the first one? I can try. Okay, Anna Claudia. Let's listen to her. Let's see. Okay. John Callahan made this experiment, Universe 25. At the beginning, he put together four couple of mice. In a short time, they began to reproduce so fast. This faster process made the community of mice grow up so fast. However, after 350 days, 
this uh, reproduction process started to decrease significantly. When the number of mice uh, reached the 600, it started a, I, it started a path, a kind of power heritage between them. And first, uh, but uh, uh, heritage between them, but then came up, came up the miserables. The big ones started to attack the group, um, giving as a result that a lot of male mice collapsed psychologically. After this process, the next result, as a the next result was that the female population got protected between them and they became a kind of aggressive with their with their young when after when the mice after that when the time passed, passed by the females show increasingly aggressive behavior Isolate elements and allow reproduction. Reproduction, birds decrease. The birds decrease, but at the same time, mortality increase um, between the youngest. Then appeared a new class or a new generation. The generation of male uh, rodents, the ones naming beautiful, the beautiful. They, they didn't, I, I was writing so fast. They denied to mate with females or fight for a space. The only thing they cared of was to sleep and to eat. Very good. <laughs> okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. It was very I good. Eh? Very nice. <laughs> I was writing so fast that I, I don't understand myself. <laughs> <laughs> My letter. <laughs> no, but it's, it's it's good. I mean, it was able to be understandable. So that that is is nice. Okay. Good. Who wants to be the next one? Me, teacher. Okay, let's listen to David. Okay, John Callahan made the twenty fifth universe experiment. At the beginning, he put four mice couples that, in a little time, start to reproduce themselves. This caused that the population grow fastly. However, after uh, 715 days, seven, no, sorry, 600, 315 days, the revolution started diminishing significantly when the number of rodents reached 600. Was formed a hierarchy between them and appeared the gnomes as miserables. The big rodents start to attack the group, given the result that a lot of males start to collapse psychologically. As a result, the females protect themselves, and this, at the same time, they evolve aggressive with their newborns. As the time passes, the, fem the females show behavior every time more aggressive. Elements of isolation and lack of reproductive mood. There was a low natality rate, and at the same time, an increment of mortality rate in your girl mice. Then appeared a new mice male class called the beautiful mice. They united to copulate with the female mice or to fight defending their space. Everything they cared about was to eat and to sleep. Very good, very nice. Very, uh, you can see that. He used different words, but the story was was the same, right? So very good, perfect. So that that is the the idea here that you find your own way to say things, right? Good, perfect. Uh, thank you, David. So who wants to be the next one? We can. Okay, perfect. So let's listen to Marvin. Okay, John Callahan did the, the did sorry did did the experiment Universe Twenty Five. In the beginning, he put four mice couples who, in a little time, started to reproduce. That made the population grow out fast. 
However, after 300, 315 days, the population began to decrease significantly. When the roll in total was 600, uh, hierarchy <laughs> appeared between them. Those who appeared were called miserables. The bigger rolling started to attack to the group, and that result in many males started to collapse psychologically. As a result, female protecting herself at the same time, she became aggressive with her baby mouse. Throughout the time, female shall well show behavior increasingly aggressive, isolated elements, and lack of desire to reproduce. There was a low beer rate at the same time, mortality increased in younger mouse. Then appears a new mouse male class. They call beautiful mice. They deny to relate it with the female or fight for their place. All the matter to them was eat and sleep. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, understandable again, different words. So that is that's the thing, right? Very good, perfect. Who wants to be the next one? Me, teacher, but I don't think right now. Okay, go ahead with what you have. Okay. Let me see. Yo, Diamond did the Universe 25 experiment. At the first time, it took four straps of rats. They start to reproduce. That's why their population grows fast. After 350 days, of the of the reprodu of the repro reproducer when they were six uh, hundred uh they a hierarchy form between they between uh, between they then some was called miserable the big rodents to collapse psychologically. As a result, uh, I don't understand my, my your my, handwriting. Yes. <laughs> uh, the big rodents to collapse psychologically. As a result, the um, the females pro protect protected themselves and became aggressive. After a time, the male show more aggressive. That is. Okay. Okay. That's good. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. It's understandable as well. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to be the next one? I will. Perfect. So, John Telham made the experiment in Universal Fire at the beginning, took five pairs of nieces. And in few time uh, began to reproduce what happened that their population grow fast. However, after 315 days, its reproduction, uh, its reproduction began to decrease significantly when the numbers of the rodents achieve uh, 100, uh, 600. Uh, Yerky was formed and then a period the cause miserable appeared. So miserable uh call and yep, a uh, miserable appeared and then brothers uh began to attack the group. The result that some males began to collapse psychologically as a result that families uh, protect themselves and in turn violence uh, their goals. With the pass of the time, the families show behaviors uh, show in, aggressively, uh, insulation and lack of reproduce more. Uh, and there was a drop in birth rate and uh, an increase in mortality in younger rodents. Uh, then a new class of male rodents appeared. So the class called beautiful uh, mice uh, refused to mate with fans uh, or fight for their space. All that was important to them were eat and sleep. 
Okay, very good, very nice. Yeah, as you can see, everybody has used different words, different things, um, and I mean, it's possible to understand the idea. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, who wants to be the next one? Okay, I guess I'm gonna choose uh, Dora Elizabeth. Okay, teacher, I try. Of course. John Carl Jones. Uh, did do experiment twenty five uni universally. In the beginning, set set up a. Uh, Four couples of mice, mice. Okay. in short time, start a uh, reproduction. What uh, provide the population uh, grow up faster. Uh, however, after 350 days, the reproduction start to run and when the number, the miss came to a uh, uh, 600, uh, um, well, I don't know, it's a, a, a hierarchy among day. Then appeared the call the miserables. The miss more biggest start to uh, start to um, um, I know I don't know at group with the result the the most males start to collapse must must. Families start to collapse the cardiology. Uh, as a result, the families uh, uh, families and be, become uh, aggressive with hers, with hers, mm, uh, with hers become a uh, with past time the families show out behaviors is more aggressive uh, they most they show a uh, lack of uh, uh, I don't know, I, I, this word, but it's what uh, uh, don't land uh, uh, bird rate. Uh, at the same time, mortally increase of in miss, more younger uh, miss, they appear a class newt of class, a class newt a miss, called them beautiful miss. This, this, uh, this miss refuse pay with the farmers or fight their space all day for for they all the more important was where a uh, hit and a sleep. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, Jose Osmin, were you able to do it? Not possible. Giselle. Hello, teacher. Sorry, I was cooking. I, I wasn't, wasn't able to, to do the exercise, but I heard what you were saying. I tried to, to, to do something in my mind, but I didn't have the chance that I didn't have the chance to write okay. the exercise. But I'm here releasing all the 
that my classmates did. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay, I will try. Okay. Uh, John Callahan made, uh, I didn't remember the number, sorry. <laughs> but ahead, John made this per experiment. At the beginning, put uh, four couples of rats or mouses. Uh, uh, in a few time, started to multiply. That makes that the population grow up quickly. However, after 300 days, the reproduction began to less significantly. When the number of mouses reached 600, uh, a hierarchy was formed between them. And later appeared the call, uh, I don't know how do you say miserable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, miserable. Miserable, okay. Uh, the bigger mouses start to attack the, to, to the group with the result that a lot of males began to collapse psychologically. psychologically. Uh, as a result, the female got protect and at the same time, uh, they become aggressive with their childs. I don't know how to say it. Child is it like the I don't know it's like the, the human with the, the, the animals, but oh go ahead, don't worry. The child uh, over time the females show behavior uh, each time more aggressive. Elements of uh, Iceland and less rep reproductive mood. Uh, uh, the you put mood is lo que se viene a la mente. That's fine, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Had allow not not only uh, taste uh, beer beer I don't, I don't know this. and at the same time increase increase our mortality in younger mouses. Then appears a new class of male mouses, the called beautiful mouses. They refuse to reprodu reproduce with the males or or fight for their space. All they, that they care about was eating and sleeping. That's it. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect. Thank you, very good. Uh, let's see, William Alexander, were you able to do it? Not possible. Uh, Francisco Eduardo? Not possible either. Uh, Jarvin Isaac. Okay, Jose Marcus. Okay, and that's it, I guess, right? Very good. Uh, yeah, interesting this exercise because we listen the words and we need to think fast and try to the words not only the right word but also in order remember that sometimes the order in english is the opposite right so because when you have an adjective for example if it goes first the adjective and then the the noun that is describing um this is a good exercise that you can do yourself whenever you want to practice a little bit more i mean do it and then check if you did it well um, let's analyze that one. I have it here in English as well. So let me just show you. And another thing that is important before uh, we go and check into that one is that this is this is not a story. This was a real experiment. And there is more. Let me show you what happened with that real experiment that these scientists made there in the 70s. They the, the, the scientists. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, come on. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, uh, there is more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a story. It's a real thing that happened. My goodness. So, <laughs> I hate. <I'll> <laughs> look at this. Uh, the Universe 25 experiment. This is one of the most terrifying experiments in the history of science, which through the behavior of a colony of mice 
is an attempt by scientists to explain human societies. The idea for Universe 25 came from American scientist John Calhoun, who created an ideal world in which hundreds of mice would live and reproduce. More specifically, Calhoun built a so-called mice paradise, a specially designed space where the rodents had an abundance of food and water, as well as a large living space. At first, he placed four pairs of mice that soon began to reproduce, causing their population to grow rapidly. However, after 315 days, their reproduction began to decline significantly. When the number of rodents reached 600, a hierarchy was formed among them, and then the so-called miserables appeared. Larger rodents began to attack the group, with the result that many males began to break down psychologically. As a result, the females protected themselves and, in turn, became aggressive towards their young. With the passage of time, the females showed increasingly aggressive behaviors, elements of isolation, and a lack of reproductive drive. There was a low birth rate, and at the same time, an increase in mortality in younger rodents. So, a new class of male rodents appeared, the so-called beautiful mice. They refused to mate with the females or fight for their space. All they cared about was eating and sleeping. At one time, beautiful males and isolated females made up the majority of the population. With the passage of time, juvenile mortality reached 100% and reproduction reached zero. Among the endangered mice, homosexuality was observed and at the same time, cannibalism increased despite the abundance of food. Two years after the start of the experiment, the last baby in the colony was born. By 1973, he had killed the last mouse in Universe 25. John Calhoun repeated the same experiment 24 more times, and each time the result was the same. Calhoun's scientific work has been used as a model for interpreting social breakdown, and his research serves as a focal point for the study of urban sociology. What do you think about this? He was the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening what? right now. Huh? And this is happening oh, yes, right now. Yes, homosexuality, all that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> So this, I mean, this was proven before with with rats, with mice, in, in the seventies. In my, so I have two two reflections about this one. The first one is about English, right? What words you found here? The order of the words, uh, how you can compare your own writing to the other one. So. This is an internal thing that you have to analyze, right? Things like, oh, that is the word, or that is something that I should have written, or my word was better than that one. I, 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 I mean, that is good. And the other thing, of course, is about the experiment. I mean, that is crazy. Uh, human, humanity is no longer humanity, I guess. What is going to happen in the future? We don't know. I mean, the mice, the last mice is going to eat us. Yeah, but at least we are not cannibal. At least you not, know what? Right. I, I I can no, but I can compare the, that last mice as the technology, the AI. There will be a human 
uh, possible that he don't need he or she, an android we don't know, don't need to eat. They don't have the need to uh, drink water, so to breathe. So even though they don't have soul, so they don't care if they kill or they. I mean, what happened? Please tell me the 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 feelings of the AE equipment. They have none. I mean, that could be like a analogy, like like David said for for what we are living now. But I mean, I'm just thinking that the that last mice mouse could be the a AI. Mine. In my, it's it's interesting, right? It's interesting how an experiment like that that is repeated twenty five times and it was the same every time is reflecting on humanity. Maybe not exactly, and I mean maybe we had the chance to do better things, right? Because mm -hmm. we are not. But you can compare, and it's something that is kind of happening right now. So, yeah. What so, do you so. think about that? <laughs> Any other opinion? It is, it is a um, uh, difficult situation because we need to think in that. This is the John Luke, a uh, uh, former philosopher, said the Man is the uh, the wolf of the man. Uh, it's, it's a, and uh, the Guaraguao said that the, there is no peace in the earth. Meanwhile, the human get, uh, I don't know how to say that, but the, the human take advantage of the other humans. And uh, we need to reflect because uh, uh, we need to see that. I, I I know a guy that is for Netherlands. That he is an entrepreneur, but he is a, a, a having success uh, forming a new concept of entre uh, uh, of companies of uh, uh, enterprises. He has uh, he was talking uh, about the the communities communities we need to 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 do the companies the enterprise like a community like a family and he is having success he is implementing his model in, in some countries of uh, east in the uh, some some uh, cities in usa and uh, in, in netherlands and germany in, in some part of that that uh, a part of the world, and uh, it's, it's having success because there are the, the community thinking, not uh, individual thinking. Like uh, we are the, in our country, in other countries, because we need, maybe we need to survive. Uh, we are a generation that needs to survive, and we only take care of ourselves. But uh, this concept is a revolutionary concept, and it's something like that. Uh, it get successful is is a hope for the world. <laughs> uh, start to thinking in a community note, and and he's a, a promoting a in a University of Amsterdam a concept that not only graduate each individual in the university, we need to graduate all the class all the class, but to promote the real uh, thing work. We need to think in all the class, not only in the, some people, the, the good ones or, or that one, all of them need to, to, to take the, the, the course in, maybe not in the same way, but at the same, at the same time. And that is important because this is, is like to me, it's a, a hope for the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe that we have the chance, right? Um, yeah, it's reflecting, but not all society is like that one, right? There are people that they still want to get married, um, have family. I don't know what's going to be the future, but uh, if we continue and educate people, uh, I mean, probably this is not going to happen. But it's very interesting how 
that can reflect on some of the behaviors of some of the people uh, that we have right now. So it's interesting. Yeah. So and it's a good exercise. As I was telling you, this is a good chance for you to. Uh, sometimes we think, what else we can do, right? Watch videos is good, but we can do things like that one. If we are together, the next module, we're going to repeat this, but it's not going to be written. I'm going to speak and you are going to translate live. So that, that is going to be interesting. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that is going to be for the next chapter, not for this chapter. So... <laughs> Okay, my friends, um, remember, uh, if you haven't finished the platform, today we need to finish, right? Tomorrow, before the class, it has to be done, everything. So if you have questions during the day, you can ask me, and I'm going to be checking on that one. Uh, uh, David was saying also at the beginning of the class that one part of the first part of the final test, the same happens. Uh, for you to get that a valid answer, you need to have a space. You need to enter a space between the last word and the question mark. So uh, please take that in consideration whenever you are doing that part. And also, um, if you have questions, just chat with me. And uh, of course, I'm gonna help you out. Do you have guys any questions before we finish? Not teacher. Okay. Then after this shocking thing, <laughs> we're gonna check the attendance. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Yes, teacher. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejia. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Before we go, remember that tomorrow we're going to do, it's supposed, right, that we're going to do the, uh, thank you, Francisco, we're going to do the survey, uh, the survey for uh, Insaforp. And I was wondering also, uh, imagine, imagine if what we just read becomes truth Maybe in the future, we're going to tell to our grandchildren, we knew that was going to happen. <laughs> we saw that in an English class with a teacher, and he told us that is going to happen. <laughs> so, <I did>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my friends, have a good night. See you tomorrow in Dreaming English. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night.